Hello friends and welcome to yet another episode from my series Quick Thoughts On, in which I always ramble a bit about the next story from the huge Star Trek universe. The next episode aired after the episode of the second season of classic Star Trek called Obsession was a Scotty-centric episode called Wolf in the Fold, and these are my honest opinions about it. The episode starts as every episode of Everything Ever should start, a beautiful woman dancing a semi-oriental sensual dance. When the camera pans, we see three familiar faces in the audience, Kirk, McCoy and Scott, and the episode gets stupid very quickly. It looks like Scotty had a bad head injury in a recent accident, and because the accident was caused by a woman, Bones was afraid that Scotty might start hate all women, and as a therapy, they went to this bar on the planet Argelius. Now, I can't decide if this makes McCoy the best doctor ever, or or the worst doctor ever. In real world, when I get attacked or injured by a woman, my doctor won't prescribe me a trip to a strip bar. I mean, I wouldn't complain, but I doubt my insurance company would pay for it. But in the same time, just the thought that if Scotty's accident was caused by a woman, he might start to hate women seems to be kind of insulting to both men and women, to be honest. Is there a doctor in the audience? Is this actually medically possible. Anyway, after the dance ends, using the music from uh, Vina's dance, from the cage and the menagerie, Scotty and the dancer leave the room, and the overall feeling changes during this scene. It starts very warm and charming, but it ends feeling very creepy. Judging by the look on Scotty's face, he doesn't really want just a wall, and judging by the look on her face, she isn't very happy about it. But the story suddenly goes to a complete completely different direction, which is pretty unexpected if you see this episode for the first time. Kirk and McCoy hear a woman screaming, they run there and find the dancer dead, and Scotty standing over her body with a bloody knife in his hands. The interesting thing is that he doesn't remember what happened, at least that's what he claims. Of course, because he had head injuries, uh, his friends automatically assume that he suffers from amnesia caused by that injury. Kirk and McCoy refuse to admit that he is the only real suspect and desperately try to find other explanations. There were two men who didn't look happy that she left with Scotty and left the place earlier, maybe they have something to do with it. The investigator, a certain Mr. Hengist from Rigel 4, seems eager to arrest Scotty. It looks like they didn't have a murder on Argelius for a few centuries, so it looks in the beginning um, that he wants to put somebody in jail as quickly as possible and not really try to find who actually committed the crime. The prefect Jaris, who came there with his beautiful wife Saibo, says something even more unexpected. The the punishment for a murderer was death by torture and the law was never changed. So now we have three groups of people and everybody of them wants to solve this case in a different way. Kirk and McCoy want to use a psycho tricorder using which they could map Scotty's memories during the last 24 hours. Hengist wants to put Scotty in jail as quickly as possible and Jaris wants to use the Argelian empathic uh, contact using his wife Saibo, who has has these special powers to find out what happened. Because Saibo needs to mentally prepare, they want to use the time to examine Scotty's mind, so they call the Enterprise and the Psycho Trike Order gets beamed down in the hands of an officer, a female officer. I bet you all know where this is going. I wonder why didn't they put her directly in a red uniform to make it even more obvious. She leaves the room with Scotty when Saibo comes from her meditation and asks for the murder weapon. The knife, however, can't be found anywhere, and all they hear is again a woman scream, and they run down, only to find the officer dead, again stabbed to death, 
and Scotty is again with the knife and he again claims he doesn't remember anything. So hooray! Scotty leaves twice the room with the woman and twice the woman gets stabbed to death and Scotty is always the only one who could be responsible for it. But Kirk doesn't give up and tries to OJ Simpson Scotty out of this situation. They talk with the two men mentioned before, one of them being the dancer's father and the second one her lover, but this of course goes nowhere and mainly none of them would have any reason to kill the Enterprise officer. They now try to use Saibo's powers and start a seance. I hope I pronounced it correctly, probably not. She screams strange words, including Beratis, Kesla and Red Jack, and mumbles something about huge hunger and hatred of women. Suddenly the lights go down, a woman screams, and when the lights get back up, Scotty is holding her in his arms and she has the knife in her back. Well, this looks worse and worse for Scotty. The rest of the episode takes place on the Enterprise. The investigation has moved there and we are shown a neat little tool, a computer which can scan if somebody is lying or telling the truth. Well, that device would be very useful in a couple of different episodes too, wouldn't it? Now we find out that Scotty says the truth when he claims he did not kill Saibo. He did not kill her. It's not true. It's bullshit. He did not kill her. He did not. And he is also not lying about the fact that he doesn't remember what happened with the previous two women. They start to investigate what uh, do the three words mean. Beratis, Kesla and Red Jack. And what a surprise. Those are names of killers of women on different planets. Red Jack is an old English name for a serial killer from the 19th century London. Also known known as Jack the Ripper. And this is where the episode lost me. Oh yes, the killer isn't Scotty, he isn't mentally ill, he is not under an influence of some strange alien, nothing like that. The killer is a non-corporeal... non-corpor... Bodyless creature who can enter humans or machines. Right now it's inside Hengist. He tries to kick the living hell out of Kirk, but Kirk punches the air in front of him so strongly that Hengist falls down and dies. But the creature isn't dead. The creature just entered the computer and tries to scare all of the crew members because it eats their fears or something. And it kills women because women are more easily scared than men. Yeah, this episode didn't age well, did it? Thankfully McCoy has a solution. Drugs. Yes, the crew is saved by getting high on drugs. That's honestly not something I thought I will ever say in a video about Star Trek. Spock requests the computer to count pi till the last digit, which is of course an irrational number, so it's a task uh, the computer will never finish. So he basically performs a DOS attack. The creature has to leave the computer, but because almost everybody is high, it enters Jarvis before uh, Spock gets him down and then he enters the dead body of Hengist, threatens to kill the female officer and grabs her by her private parts. But before you have the chance to think if he has plans to later run for president, Kirk puts him down and puts him on uh, the transporter platform. Now as you can see he lies on two different platforms. Why do they have them there? I must admit one thing, I always thought that uh, they actually have a purpose of being there, meaning the only stuff uh, which is directly on them can be transported. So when I've seen this scene for the very first time as a kid I was afraid or maybe hoping not sure anymore, that only his legs and his head get transported and we will get a shot of his bloody torso lying on the floor, but thankfully no. They beam him out to space, in hole, and because his human host will die in space immediately, because he's no female force sensitive general, the creature should die too. So now Kirk is the only one who is not high on a ship filled with people who are on drugs, so what does he do well it's time to get drunk and get some cheeks now this episode was 
interesting. If you watch my channel, you probably know that I love me some good mystery. That's why the first half of this episode belongs to my favorite moments of classic Star Trek. During the whole time, I keep thinking about who is the real killer, or will they say that Scotty is the killer? If yes, why? What reason will they think for him? You can't have somebody like Scotty and turn him into a cold-blooded killer. There must be a very good reason for this. And then we find out that the real killer is Jack the Ripper. I don't know like you, but that moment always makes me pretty upset. Don't get me wrong, the mystery about Jack the Ripper belongs to my favorite mysteries, but it just doesn't work in this episode for me. Not sure how many of you know Babylon 5, but they had also a Jack the Ripper episode, and that one was much more interesting than this one. And why does the tone change drastically for the last act? I mean, the episode starts as a murder mystery, then it changes to a courtroom drama, and uh, then it changes into, I don't know how to call it, a stoner comedy? There is also one important thing which I have a problem with. I have said so many times on this channel that I'm not a feminist, or at least I'm not the, the thing that most people will imagine when they hear the word feminist. You know, something like Big Red or Trigly Puff. But I must admit that I have a problem with the depiction of women in this episode. I mean, I, as a straight guy, like watching pretty girls, and the beginning looks like that's exactly what we're gonna get, until you start thinking about it. The girl does this sexually provocative dance for visitors from outer space, and it is implied that Scotty will have sex with her. And everything suggests that this is considered to be normal routine for her. And later we hear from her father that she danced uh, for him since she was a little girl. So I really hope that I'm just overthinking it and that's not what I intended to say. But on the other hand, uh, Star Trek writers have always included some social commentary to the scripts. Also the sentence that uh, women are easier to scare, the less I say about it the better. Now this episode is basically free episodes joined into one. The first one is the murder mystery, the second one is the court drama, and the third one is what I called for a lack of a better term stoner comedy. While I absolutely love the first third, my opinion starts going down during the second third and is basically down to zero in the last third. So how to rate it? Uh, well, let's say it's 10 out of 10 plus 5 out of 10 plus 0 out of 10, which means uh, 15 out of 30 or 5 out of 10. It's definitely an entertaining episode, but the ending for me is a pretty big disappointment. Plus, as I said, I don't like the treatment of women, so yes, I think giving this episode an average rating of 5 out of 10 is pretty fair. But as always, these were just my opinions. Feel free to write down your opinions down in the comment section. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, and if you have some free Time. Feel free to watch any of the other videos I have on my channel. You should see some links on screen right now. And I have already started to work on my video about the trouble with tribbles. So, see you soon. Until then, thanks a lot for watching and bye.